From Hollywood, the Hollywood Radio Theater. Starring Charlton Heston and Donna Reed in The Naked Jungle. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we bring you the unusual romance of a beautiful bride who traveled into the wilderness to meet her husband for the first time. A proud and ruthless man who built a huge plantation in the naked jungle, only to have his entire fortune threatened by an army of man-eating ants. And as our stars of this current George Pal production for Paramount Pictures, we have one of our most charming Academy Award winners, Donna Reed and handsome Charlton Heston, who will recreate his role of the courageous adventurer. Now, Act One of The Naked Jungle, starring Charlton Heston as Christopher Linegan and Donna Reed as Joanna Linegan. <laughs> Many weeks had passed since I had started the long journey to South America. But now the end was almost in sight. There were only three others aboard the tiny riverboat. The captain, his helper, and the government official. We are coming close, Mrs. Leininger. Soon you will see the beginning of your husband's land. All right, better start getting my things together. Oh, oh, there is no hurry. We won't reach his dock until tomorrow. Oh, is it that large, his plantation? Ah, there is more to it than size. It is another world. And your husband? More powerful than a king. You know him well, Commissioner? I have known Mr. Lannington since he first came here in 1886, 15 years. But no, I do not know him well. But you know all about me, don't you? You haven't mentioned it, but I'm sure you know all about me. <laughs> you are 25 years old, you come from New Orleans, and you married Mr. Lannington by proxy. You have never seen each other. Mm -hmm, yes. You know a great deal. When your part of the marriage ceremony was performed, Mr. Leinington's brother acted in his place. When the marriage by proxy was performed here, I took your place. You know, I was very good. <laughs> I also performed the ceremony. You're practically one of the family. Well, as commissioner of this area, I have to know everything. And besides, I am what you call nosy. Mm. Will you be stopping off at my husband's plantation? No, Mrs. Leinington, but I wish you much joy in our marriage to Mr. Leinington. Oh, thank you. But you still haven't told me anything about him, you know. Well, in a few days on my way back, I will visit with you. By then, you will know more about Mr. Leinington than I do. <laughs> We reached the dock the following afternoon, and the boat departed. I wasn't afraid. I had known from the start where I was going that my husband's plantation was deep in the jungle, and he the only white man among hundreds of Indian natives. The dock was crowded with them. They stared at me in silence. Then a man in a white linen suit was pushing his way through them. Ma'am, um, you are very welcome here. My name is Inkata. I am Mr. Leinenden's number one man. Uh, how do you do? We are very glad you are come. We hope to be very much in love with you, and you be much in love with us. We think you are very pretty. Kipovi, Balanta Kipovi. And my people, they wish you well. Thank you. Ma'am, whatever you desire, you will ask. But may I ask where Mr. Leinenden is? I expected to meet him here. Ma'am, he is... He is coming from jungle. He is very dirty. He does not wish to see you like dirty man. The carriage is waiting, ma'am. I take you to house. Thank you. As we drove from the river, the jungle suddenly halted like a wall. Beyond, on low rolling hills, was the plantation. Trees, cocoa trees, miles and miles in every direction. He has done all this, ma'am, Mr. Leinenden. It is beyond belief, the things he has done. Indeed, the house was beyond belief. Little less than a palace. A palace in the jungle. And it struck me that all this seemed too magnificent, too new. And I wondered if anyone had ever really lived here. I had bathed, changed, and unpacked my trunks before he finally knocked at the door. Light engine, madam. Come in, please. 
I was unable to meet you at the dock. Yes, I... I looked for you. You will forgive my appearance, madam. The jungle can be very hot and dirty. My name is Joanna. I know that. Why are you smiling? I... Well, I'm just trying to be friendly. I don't like humor in a woman. It's been my experience that such an... Truly, I'm not being... And you interrupt. You don't like being interrupted? No. But never mind, you'll get used to me. I hope so. Frankly, you're not what I did expect it. Am I worse or better? Just more. More than I expected. Well, I, I think if I study that a while, it may turn out to be a compliment. Are you making fun of me, madam? Oh, I, I'm sorry. I know this must be as difficult for you as it is for me. I might not be what you expected. Not quite the gentleman you might have pictured. I hope we're not going to quarrel. I am your wife, and I intend to fulfill my obligations as happily as I may. I want to please you. Madam, you know my situation here. This plantation is a great distance from civilization. I could not leave it to find a wife, but I wanted a wife. Your brother explained all that to me. You want a family, so do I. You're very... Bold? Never mind. What I want to say is this. Our contract, marriage by proxy, is not an uncommon way to get a wife in the jungle. Only you are uncommon. How did my brother find you? He advertised in the newspapers. And picked you? Well, not exactly. I didn't apply, but he asked me to read the applications and help him choose a wife for you. I finally decided I should be much better for you than anyone else. Indeed. Your brother didn't agree with me at first. He's a very stubborn man. It runs in the family. I know why my brother picked you, but what made you decide to marry a man you'd never seen before? Your letters to him. I could tell how lonely you were. I knew you needed me. I don't need anyone. Not even children? I suppose I'm to consider myself fortunate you came down here. If I had thought there'd be any doubt about it, I would never have left New Orleans. You're here, and, and you're welcome. We do things by schedule in the tropics. We eat early, we go to bed early. Dinner is at 7 o'clock. Your coffee smells much stronger than New Orleans coffee. It is. Oh, the dinner was wonderful. The chicken especially. It was lizard. I... Um... La, I'm so pleasantly surprised with the climate. It, it's not nearly as hot as I thought. Does it matter? Not really. As you must observe, I'm merely trying to make conversation. Why? I can't think of a single reason. My brother wrote that you play the piano. I'd like to hear you. We'll have our coffee in the other room. <laughs> I'd like to hear it played before the termites get at it. I had it brought up river, 2,000 miles. For me? No, for anyone who could play it. I wanted someone who could. Play. What would you like to hear? I know nothing about music. You speak any languages? Would you care to converse in French? I don't speak French. I was merely trying to see if you were everything my brother said you were. Yes. I am exactly as represented. I speak French and German. I play the piano, converse intelligently, and have very nice teeth. Would you care to count them? You also have a temper. And you don't like a woman with a temper, do you? I don't mind. I have a temper myself. Would you surprise me? You're very beautiful. Intelligent, accomplished. There must be something wrong with you. I'm not that lucky to get a perfect woman just like that out of the grab bag. There's something wrong somewhere. I thought you didn't like me, that you were disappointed in me. Instead, you're afraid of me. You think so? You're looking for a fault in me. Anything so you can ignore me. You know a lot about men, don't you? You wanted an ornament, something nice-looking to do justice to the rest of the furniture. Brought up the river with great difficulty. Just to keep it dusted and see that the termites don't get at it. That's the kind of wife you wanted. Instead, you got me. And you're afraid of me. 
I said you know a lot about men. More than you know about women. Where did you learn? From what man? That's it, isn't it? That's what's wrong. You've been with another man. I was married. Didn't your brother tell you? No. He left that out. Everything else about you. Everything but that. He knew he should have told you. Perhaps he knew me better than I thought he did. How long were you married? Well, nearly a year. He was killed. Killed? How? He drank. He was gay, charming, and usually drunk. One night he went out riding. Very gay, very charming, and very drunk. The money you sent to pay my debts paid his. So he was no good. He was the kindest man I've ever known. He was a weakling. You didn't like him. I loved him. What about the others? Were there others, Mr. Leiningen? Did your brother withhold information, or don't you believe him? Madam, you've seen my house. It took me seven years to build this house, to make it what it is in the heart of the jungle. It's what I wanted, and I built it. I wanted it filled with beauty. I, I wanted a family I could be proud of in this house that I'm proud of and the land that I took out of the river and the jungle with my bare hands. The only condition I ever made about anything I brought up the river was that it be unspoiled, worth the effort. If you will excuse me. I'm not finished with you, but madam. But you are. Good night, Mr. Lyman. I did not see him again until the following afternoon. He sent Inkitcher to the house. If I wished, Mr. Leiningen would show me around the plantation. We went on horseback. For several moments, we rode in silence, and then... You'll observe that in almost every direction, there are canals and locks. Without these locks, my entire plantation would be under the river, where I got it. It took me five years to get a foothold here. I started with 20 acres and four men. I was 19 years old. Over there, where the natives are working, is my irrigation dam. It was built by men who had never seen one in their lives. I had a hundred men by that time. I used to lose two or three every week. Headhunters. May I, may I ask what the men are doing? They're loading the harvest. Cocoa beans. The sacks will go to the sheds, from the sheds to the dock. If your eyes could see it all, they'd witness 800 Indians laboring on nearly 200,000 acres of river bottom. Eaten by flies, worms, lice, or the dozen diseases men get in the jungle. We work for cocoa beans so that your friends can drink chocolate with their breakfast in New Orleans. It has made you very wealthy. Yes. And given you great satisfaction. I'm aware of what I've accomplished here, but take one step beyond the limits of my plantation and you're in the bush. The living jungle where no man has a name and the only law is to stay alive. In the jungle, man is just another animal. I don't believe that. You see that man over there? He's Katina, my foreman. He's one of the first men who worked for me. Katina's more civilized than the rest. He's like Inkachan. He has Mayan blood. He looks very intelligent, Katina. He carries a pouch over his shoulder. It contains his proudest possession. It makes him a superior person. Mm, what is it? Katina! Madanama, dwari vite me. Observe it, madam. But... But what is it? That's a human head he's holding. A shrunken human head. We'll go back to the house, madam. I... I must start to learn my way around, mustn't I? There will be no need of that. You will never leave the house unattended. Days went by. The only time I really saw my husband was at dinner. He would appear precisely at 7 o'clock, his clothes immaculate and fashionable. The servants would wait on us, and we'd dine in silence, as the brilliantly colored birds in their shining cages would stare at us from the balcony. Shut up. Something wrong with that bird. He hasn't said a word for almost a week till now. At that, he's said more than you have. Everything I say seems to make things worse. I, I'm trying not to irritate you. I've noticed that. I find it irritating. Would you mind if I went upstairs? I I'm very tired. Madam, that perfume you're wearing, is it one of those I had brought up the river for you? Oh, yes, I found them on the dressing table, a dozen different bottles. And this is one of them? No, this is my own. Good night. Inkitcher. I may serve you, sir. 
Brandy. Bring me the bread. It was storming outside, violent and beautiful. I sat at the window of my bedroom, fascinated by the fury of the wind and the rain. More than an hour went by, and then, suddenly, the door of my room burst open. And he stood there, glaring, towering. My door wasn't locked. It never has been locked. I didn't think it was necessary. Here, on the table, the perfume. This is the perfume I wanted you to wear. Isn't it good enough for you? Have you even tried it? I... I didn't realize it meant that You'll much wear to it you. till you reek every drop. Maybe now you'll remember you're my wife. Light engine's woman. You'll wear my perfume and you'll take my kisses. Now, do you know who you are? Now do you know? Light engine's woman. I'm sorry for you. This won't happen again. It doesn't matter. That isn't what I meant. I'm not interested in your opinion of me. I want you to leave. I'll see that you get money, enough to make it all right that you came all this way. But I want you to leave. The boat will be back for you in a few weeks. That will be the end of it, you think? I made a mistake marrying someone I'd never met, but you made a mistake coming here. No. I was looking for something, and I was willing to risk anything to find it. The strength and purpose that was missing in my first husband. He was a weakling. So are you. Your weakness is your pride. Yes, I'm proud. Too proud to take another man's leavings. Maybe you don't realize what it meant to me to have you come here. In the jungle, they have a name for the man who goes into the native villages buying wives. No one calls me by that name. You said I didn't know anything about women... You were right, madam. I know nothing about women. Nothing at all. I thought about that when I saw how you were. I, I couldn't understand why it was so important to you that I had been married before. Then I realized that's why I'm so sorry for you. I'll have your door repaired. Afterwards, until your boat comes, whether you lock it or not, doesn't matter to me. Act two of The Naked Jungle in just a moment. Letters that come to this show from servicemen bear postmarks from all over the world, and it's plain to see that, well, they're having a wonderful opportunity to observe new customs and traditions among people of other lands. They're finding out, too, that these ideas of other people aren't so strange after all. They take the matter of dancing as an example. In many countries, dancing between the sexes is unknown. They dance for each other. They think the Western habit of dancing together is pretty vulgar. And in the countries of Europe, every country has its own favorite type of dancing. In France, it's the bourree. In Spain, the fandango. In Italy, the tarantella. In Central Europe, the hora. These are national dances, and the steps might seem strange and unfamiliar to the traveler. But uh, as our servicemen have observed, it might be just as hard for us to explain jitterbugging. The gyrations of our teenagers rival any movements of any group around the world for sheer energy, if nothing else. The same is true of all customs and traditions in every country. The way of doing things may be different, but the ideals are the same. The strangeness of people begins to wear off when you start to understand them. Their customs and traditions begin to make sense when you understand the reasons behind them. And our servicemen are helping to maintain goodwill between us and the people of other countries by observing these customs, by learning about them and honoring them. Now here's our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act two of The Naked Jungle, starring Donna Reed as Joanna and Charlton Heston as Lion and Jim, with Jay Novello as commissioner. More than a week passed. We continued to live like strangers, my husband and I. And then one night we had a guest. The commissioner had returned. The 
That's the end of the composition? No. I thought not. Finish it. I can't. Then start again. I'd rather not. I'm sure the commissioner would be disappointed not to hear more. Um, perhaps Mrs. Leiningen is tired. I will be looking forward to a full recital on my next visit. I'm sorry, but I won't be here. Won't be here? Madam enjoyed such a full life in New Orleans. She finds our country somewhat dull. She's leaving. Oh, I am sorry. I hoped you would like our country, Mrs. Lyman. Oh, I do. It's beautiful and exciting. Ah, but you miss your friends, the animation of the city. No. Mr. Leiningen thinks I don't belong here. The commissioner is not interested in our differences, madam. Your reasons for leaving are unimportant. Uh, forgive me, but that is not correct. I would be desolate to think Mrs. Leiningen was unhappy with my country. I shall always remember it, commissioner. And your kindness. Good night. May I say something? You may not. If you want more brandy, help yourself. Thank you. You, uh, will have a good crop this year? Do you really care? No, but dull conversation is better than quarreling. I've known you a long time, my friend, and I wonder, can a man turn into stone? Well, I will be leaving early in the morning. Where to? The Rio Negro Basin. We've had some peculiar reports recently. Uh, trouble? I think so. Oh, your uh, servants, where are they? They've gone to their village. You can talk. CG birds have been seen as far west as Ecuador. Even the monkeys are moving out of the Rio Negro. Something is driving them out. And I think it's something big. What? Marabunta. What makes you so sure? I am not so sure. I hope I'm wrong. Marabunta. It happened last 12 years before you came here. A hundred years would be too soon. And meanwhile, I have to run down the rumors. How do you plan to go there? Upstream to the mouth of the Baramura and then across to the big river. Why? I'll go with you. We can take the woman as far as the Baramura. She can get the mailboat there. You want her to go that badly? If it's Marabunta in the Rio Negro, she'll be glad to go. Yes. It is best for her to leave. You're frightened? And what would it take to frighten you? I haven't seen it yet. And you've seen everything, eh? Everything but Marabunta, I think. Who is it? Leidengen, madam. May I come in? The door is open. I didn't wake you up. No, I... I've been reading. Please don't be disturbed. I'm not, Mr. Leidengen. My name is Christopher. I haven't asked before, but I hope you've been comfortable here. These rooms, they used to be mine. I thought you might like them. I do. Oh, perhaps while you're here, you'll open that closet door for me. It seems to be stuck. And, and you're very good at opening doors. It's rusted. Things rust very quickly here. Or rot right away. What have you been reading, Joanna? I found it in your library. Poetry. Oh, I don't read much myself. I bought all those books by weight. 800 pounds of books is what I ordered. <laughs> Whoever selected them for you has good taste. You selected them yourself, didn't you? Are you afraid I might think you weak for reading poetry? Perhaps. As Fontaine says somewhere in that book, each man is three men. What he thinks he is, what others think he is, and what he really is. And which line engine is this? The last. The real line engine. Uncertain, complex, a little pompous, even laughable sometimes. I've never laughed at you. I know. And I've appreciated it in my fashion. I've written a letter to my brother in New Orleans. When you get there, give it to him. He'll make all the necessary arrangements. I'm leaving right away, yeah, Perrin. Tomorrow. The commissioner and I are going up country. You'll go with us. You can book passage there in two or three days instead of waiting until next month. I... I hadn't realized you were in such a hurry to see the last of it's me. It's not that. The hurry, I mean. 
It's not wanting to get rid of you. It's just... I don't like what's happening to me. I think you're sorry about tonight. I tried to embarrass you before the commissioner. I'm not like that usually. I don't like to hurt things. I, I was hurt, but I'm over it now. When you're home again, you'll realize it was better to end it before it began. You'll be happier with your own kind. Someday you'll find what you're looking for. I hope you will, too. Yes. Well, I wanted to say these things. We won't have the opportunity to talk in the way. Then this is goodbye. I'm sorry it started the way it did. I don't know what went wrong. I suppose I'd never be able to get it out of my head that you loved another man before me. I don't know how to be second. I can only be first. That's very important, I know. Christopher, you don't dislike me anymore. I never did. Good night, Joanna. Once again, I was at the dock. There were two canoes, the commissioner's and my husband's, manned by half a dozen natives. Just before we left, my husband had a final word with Inkerchief. Sir, there was drum talk last night. I know, I heard it. Something coming, drum say. They say what? No, just something coming, sir. Very big trouble. Better you come back fast. I'll be back as soon as I can. Are you ready, madam? She's ready. We're waiting for you. Madam, there are 14 varieties of river bugs where we're going. We're used to them, but they'll find that dress you're wearing very inviting. Thank you, but I'm sure I'll manage to survive. Uh, and let's be on our way. We made camp that night on the muddy riverbank. The insects had all but devoured me. I left my husband and the commissioner to eat their supper. All I wanted was to throw myself down in the tent. Madam, your supper's waiting. You should eat something. I, I don't want to eat. Please, just leave me alone. As you wish. I went through your luggage and found these things. Your riding clothes and boots. Wear them tomorrow. This bottle is for the bugs. The natives make it. It doesn't smell very good, but it works. What do I do with it? Just rub it in. The effect lasts two or three days. Oh. Would you mind? Oh, please, the, the back of my neck. My shoulders. If you wish. The sun has burned you, too. You'll feel better once you get some sleep. Just make sure you're covered by the netting. I... I'm sorry to have troubled you. I should have insisted that you dress properly. How were you to know? Your hands. They're... They can be very gentle. I wish... You and I... What do you wish? It's of no consequence. Here. The bottle. Thank you. If there's anything you need, just call. Thank you. I will. I could hear them talking. Low. In whispers until I fell asleep. Then suddenly I was awake again. Cold and frightened. But it wasn't a dream. Something had awakened me. Mrs. Langingen, are you all right? What is it? Come over here to the fire. Something woke me. We as well. It took us a while to realize what it was. It's the silence. I've never heard the jungle like this before. This silence. Well, there's one way of waking up any life in there. What am I pulling? Nothing there. There's something there, all right. It's not afraid of rifle fire. What time is it? Uh, almost four o'clock. It will be daylight soon. In the morning, we'll find out. We're not waiting for morning. We'll go cross country to the Baramir. I, I just don't understand what it is you're... There's something we have to find out. There's a native village some 15 miles from here. They can tell us what we want to know. But we'll have to cut through the jungle. It's the quickest way to reach them. What is it they can tell you? You'll know about it soon enough, madam. 
A big old hobo kick him on the eye. We reached the village early in the afternoon. No one was there. It was utterly deserted. This village has been here for over 200 years. How can it be? No sign of a struggle anywhere. They weren't forced out, they ran. They found something, your Indians. But where are they? Where did they go? There's an arm of the river about 200 yards ahead. I sent them to look. Come on, line Indians. <laughs> Found a canoe, bringing it ashore. There's no one in it? Let's hope not, Mrs. Leinen. Get back, madam. Wait here. The canoe was not empty. In it was a skeleton, the bones of a man, a white man. Yes, I knew that man, Mrs. Leinen. So did your husband. His name was Gruber. He had a plantation about 30 miles from here. Gruber drank a lot, Mrs. Leinington. This whiskey bottle was in the canoe. Looks like they caught him while he was drunk. I saw him three days ago. Three days ago? But how This could... was not done by natives, Mrs. Leinington, and not by an animal. Have you ever heard the word marabunta? No. No. What does it mean? It means we're wasting time. Madam, I don't know much about you. I'll have to take your word. Do you have courage? Yes. Yeah, I mean a lot of courage. I'm not afraid. She's not going with us. We can't leave her here alone. Keep the natives here. They'll stay with her. For about five minutes, for as long as we're in sight. They know, Commissioner. We have to take her with us. What about the boat I'm supposed to meet? There won't be any boat. Not now. Where we're going, there won't be anything left alive. <laughs> Some two hours later, they found what they were looking for. A sharp rise of ground, a sort of summit commanding a good view of the jungle for miles around. Straight ahead was a valley, but like no valley I had ever seen before. Marabunta. Madam, what you see was once jungle. As green and dense and powerful as the jungle to the left and the jungle to the right. Now it's only naked stumps. The skeleton of a jungle. That ground down there. It it's moving. Is it? It is moving. It, it's rolling. Like an ocean. Now, that ground which you say is moving is several miles away. But what is it? That mass, that red brownish mass, is alive. Marabunta, soldier ants, billions and billions of them in the march. For generations, they stay in their anthills. Then, for apparently no reason at all, they start to move. Others join them as they go till they become what you're looking at, a flood of destruction. Listen. You can hear them. Oh. How do you stop them? You do not, Mrs. Leinenden. You just get out of their way. They're moving southeast toward my place. Be there in a week. Commissioner, look, they'll be afoot. Yes, that's one of them. I've heard about this. I put out advance guards. I never quite believed it. Kill it, kill it. Yes, one drop of water. Behind it, an ocean. A living ocean. Twenty miles long and two miles wide. You said they're heading toward your plantation. You have 800 people on that plantation. Do not worry, Mrs. Leinigen. We'll get you out all right. Yes. I'll go back. Marabunda. I'll be waiting for them. Make a friend and you make an ally. There's a thought for you to keep in mind as many another American has. Like Ralph Bunch. In 1947, he was sent to the Holy Land to settle the touchy Palestine issue. Throughout the negotiations, Mr. Bunch remained calm and in full control of the situation, as an ambassador of goodwill should. At 10 in the morning, he would begin his first conference. At 1 a.m. the following morning, he would stop for an hour of relaxation. Then, with a new inspiration, he'd go back to work. He exhausted everyone but himself, but he stuck to the job before him, and believe me, it was a job. The climax came when the Egyptians and Israeli hit a stalemate over the lines separating the east-west fronts. 
Each refused any line drawn on a map because it would be a visible evidence of defeat. After a steady 20-hour debate, first with the Egyptian delegation, then the Israel, Mr. Bunch tactfully suggested that they draw no line on any map, but instead run the division along a certain road. Both delegations quickly accepted his suggestion. This was just one of many difficult situations Mr. Bunch smoothed out by skillful indirection. When the agreement was finally signed between the two countries, Ralph Bunch had won a two-way fight. He added two more members to the family of the United Nations and won worldwide admiration for his race. Like others, he learned that by helping others, you help your country. We pause now for station identification. Rises on Act Three of The Naked Jungle, starring Charlton Heston as Linengen and Donna Reed as Joanna, with Jane Novello as Commissioner. Our return to the plantation was made without pause for food or rest, and with us every moment of the way was the terrible awareness of how silent the jungle had become. But as we neared our journey's end, the silence was broken. By now, Every Indian on the plantation had learned the dreaded news. Waiting for us at the dock was Ingrid. It is true, Marabunta. Yes. The carriages and horses are waiting, sir. You, you will go to house. In a moment, how many desertions? Some have left, sir. Soon they will all be gone. Commissioner, you've not changed your mind. I have to keep on the river. I've got to get to a telegraph. If you stay here, you wind up like Gruber did. There's a way of stopping the ants. I'll stop. If you don't care about yourself, think of your people. I am thinking of them. Fifteen years ago, I took them out of the jungle. If I leave now, they'll go back, and that'll be the end of civilization along the Rio Negro. I'm staying, Commissioner, and so are they. Madam, I'm running out of time. If you don't mind, I'll make this fast. You'll leave with the Commissioner. I'm sorry for everything that's happened. If you're trying to say goodbye, don't bother. I'm staying here. No, you're not staying. Get back in that boat. You're Indians. You want to keep them here. You need them to help you fight, and they're starting to leave already. If I leave, if they see me go, what about them? Will any of them stay if I go? You're quite a woman. You're right. You've both gone mad. Line engine. You're up against a monster 20 miles long and 2 miles wide. 40 square miles of agonizing death. You can't stop them. I can stop something no bigger than my thumb. They are organized. They're a trained army, and they think. That's the worst part of these ants. They actually think. So do I, and I think you'd better be leaving. But you saw what happened to the jungle. While you're smoking a cigar, they could eat a full-grown bullock right down to the naked bone. They'll pick this plantation clean and you with it. I'm staying if I can only hold enough ground to stand. They won't leave you that much. Get out, line engine. Get out while there's still time. Take what men you need. You'll have no trouble finding volunteers. Goodbye, Commissioner. Good luck. Line engine, don't be a fool. Madam Inkitcher will drive you to the house. Stay there. I'll join you later. Mrs. Line engine, no. Get out while you can. Goodbye, Commissioner. Line engine, don't be a fool! That evening at sundown, long after the commissioner had left, I heard a different sort of sound. The servants in the house cowered in the corners and whispered their fears. Then my husband told me that this was what he was waiting for. The Indians, they're coming here now. The council. What will they do? They'll assemble somewhere near the house. They want to be certain I'll hear what they have to say. They want to warn me not to interfere. You can't blame them if they want to leave. No, no, I can't blame them. I can only hope and do what I can. Meanwhile, I suggest we have dinner. It may be quite some time before either of us will eat again. They entered the courtyard, some 50 Indians, quietly, orderly. And my husband stood on the veranda, stood like a statue, and listened. I waited in the house where I could see and hear. Inkacha was next to me. Maho mapai! Lanjan hopo monakai! Pai akopo damaita! Igoro lanjan! 
Who is he, Inkacha? Mum, he's medicine man, very powerful. What did he say? He said Leningen is not good man. He said this plantation no good. Uh, your husband gives answer, ma'am. Leningen not fearful. Leningen in yet, ya patchouni. Koko ba foro agarite nana o. Koko nanyo hofo benomo. Leningen tell them he is not afraid. Leningen's woman not afraid. Era rem yo ito monoka marabun tabai. Omeo patene. Omeo on the pay. Leningen say to them, go, go if they want to. Go back to jungle like fathers lived. Hunt for heads. Or stay here with Leningen and be brave like Leningen's woman. But, ma'am, where you go, ma'am, no. Please, come back. I walked out on the veranda and stood next to my husband, but he did not turn his head. When they saw me, their angry chatter stopped and they stared and glowered. And then, slowly, they started to withdraw. Madam, thank you. The men will stay? They'll stay tonight because they're ashamed. They'll stay tomorrow because they have to. I've burned their canoes. I, I wish you hadn't done that. It's done. We're locked in here. Now we fight. <laughs> At daybreak, my husband posted lookouts in the tallest trees. Then he sent for Inkach and Katina, the foreman. Go to the village, Katina. Tell them to bring their families here. They'll stay behind the walls of the plantation. Walls not stop Marabunta, sir. Oh, not even walls two feet thick and six feet high. But in front of those walls, around the house, is the moat. I tell them, come, sir. Inkach, sir, take a hundred men across the moat. Cut down the underbrush, trees and branches. I'll bring oil, barrels of coal oil. When the time comes, we'll set it on fire. This moat will stop them, Christopher? I wanted to think fire would stop them. But if the fire fails, yes, and there is the moat. Thirty feet across. Like all ants, the marabunta are strictly land creatures. They can't swim. Monkeys not swim also, sir. I even saw monkeys cross the river. The intelligence of monkeys is more than ants and less than man. Even so, but when Marabunta come, monkeys run away. Late that evening, I found my husband in his study. He was holding a magnifying glass, and with it he was examining something in a bottle. Marabunta. I found him this afternoon near the canals. He's an advanced scout of some kind. Been studying him all evening. The face of my enemy. Hmm. Who knows, perhaps he's been studying me. Even alone, they, they look frightening. Where they go, no life is left except their own. That's what we're up against. If I were a sensible man, Joanna, what would I do, fight or run? You have to fight. A man like you doesn't run. And in any case, you're not a sensible man. You wouldn't have chosen a wife by mail if you were. I'm beginning to think the only sensible thing I ever did was send for you. Why do you say that now? Maybe because it's too late. Marabunda, Ikea! Musidia, Tapo! Marabunda, Ikea! Enkacha! Marabunda, they are here! Marabunda! A brother of Cocoville! Christopher! They're on their way, Joanna, about ten miles from here. Enkacha! Get my horse and bring me a box of dynamite. Christopher? You should have gone to bed, madam. It's very late. Did dynamite frightened me? Uh, no. I blew up some of the bridges across the irrigation canals. Some of the fallen trees, things they might use to come closer. Well, I, I heard something else. It sounded like water. Yes, I opened the canals. The locks and sluices. Flooded the lowlands. Maybe it'll help. I don't know. When will they be here? Probably by daybreak. There's one thing left. The dam. The dam that holds back the full force of the river. If it's necessary, we'll open the dam. What does it mean, that the full force of the river? The walls around this house are strong. Let's hope they're strong enough. But if they come, the Marabunta, how will you be able to reach the dam? Well, Katina's there. He'll wait for my signal. He'll know what to do. Now... Get some sleep while you can. And you? I'll rest here for a moment. There's nothing I can do? Well, very little any of us can do. Yes. You can do something. The piano. Now? You want me to play now? <laughs> Ridiculous, isn't it? Time like this? Not if... If 
I will please you. It needs tuning. It's the climate. When I bought it, I knew it couldn't last long. But I wanted to hear it. I wanted to hear it played by my wife. For me alone. Chopin. In the jungle. For the first time today, I can't hear the marabunta. Joanna, tell me about women. Where shall I begin? Anywhere. I find the subject interesting. Well, there's very little to tell, really. There are men and there are women. They're like... Well, they're like those silver cups there on the table. If they're alike, they go together quite well. Tell me about silver cups. <laughs> I do believe you're developing a sense of humor. More than that, Joanna. I want you to know that I... Christopher. Please, are you sure? You're my wife, and I love you. behind the walls and light the fire. Nothing left, except our friend here in the bottle. What happened? He got to Katina before he could warn us from the dam. Dead? Picked clean. Even his proudest possession in what was once the leather pouch. By the time I opened the floodgates, they were already at the moat. They crossed on leaves. On leaves floating in the water. But, but the fires... Yes, we tried to burn them out. When they still came, there was nothing left to burn. We stripped the house. So the house is empty. We're alive. Yes, we're alive. <laughs> I built this place out of my own will. Now I've destroyed it the same way. Took me 15 years to build my paradise. Three days to turn it into hell. I wanted a wife and child to hold what I built. Here's my air. Here in this bottle. You've given up. You're quitting. No, I've been beaten. There's a difference. I've lost everything. Everything but you. Maybe in a little while, that too. I'll never leave you now. For whatever it's worth to you, now that I have nothing else to give, I love you. That's all I ever wanted. We'll start from here. This is where we meet, Christopher. Where we say goodbye, too. The ants are still out there. We've nothing left to burn. Here, this pistol, you know how to use it? Yes, but... For yourself, if it comes to that. Meanwhile, I'll go back to the dam. How can you get through? I don't know. We all have a chance to stay alive if I can reach the dam and blow it up. There's still enough water. Enough for what? To carry off the marabunta to flood what's left of my plantation. I'm giving back everything I took from the river. <laughs> I watched him as he left the house. Then I followed him as far as the wall. Ma'am, ma'am, go back to house. What is he doing? Club for his hands, ma'am, and tall boots, and piece of cloth for face, and all over him oil, much oil. How, how far does he have to go? Ma'am, too far. Marabunta everywhere. Maybe he reaches dam. But will he come back? Maybe he reaches dam. <laughs>
torrents swept and roared across the land. And soon the land was gone and only the water remained. But the walls held fast. And when the water receded and withdrew, it carried with it the armies of the Marabunta. And we were saved. Ma'am, ma'am, look. Leinenjen, Leinenjen, come. The gates of the wall were opened. I saw him far off, bent and staggering, staggering through the mud and water, reddish-brown with the dead of our enemy. And I went to him. I went to my husband. Joanna. Joanna. And I knew that we were one, that Leiningen and Leiningen's woman would start again. 